Hey guys, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today I'll be looking at console input and output. Let's start. So the best thing to do when creating a console program is to create a console.readline at the end of our main function so that we run our console, we don't get the output closed. So it'll only close when we press the enter button, which is perfect. So we can start to construct our program. So the first thing we will do is start with console write line. So we can ask the user what is your name and we can print that to the console and you can see how the cursor is on the second line so we actually have two different variations of this right line function so we can either use right or we can use right line if we use just the right and press f5 then you see that the cursor is now placed here which is good so we can add a space at the end of this and we can start typing out open to here just so it looks like question answer awesome so when we pressed enter, ABBA was being returned to the console but nothing was happening. So this is where the readline function comes into play. So what we can do is we can make a new string variable called name and we can say console.readline. So we have console readline here and console readline here. And the two differences is that this console read line will be storing what's being returned from the console into a variable whereas this read line we don't actually care what's being returned by the console we just care if the user has returned something because we don't want to end the program until they have if we run the program now we will still get the same input and we'll see ABBA press enter and then th at this point actually this line has now executed and we have ABBA stored within string name so we can go ahead and try and print that very well back to the console we need to console write line and name and the semicolon and press F5 so we could say what is your name and type ABBA now we can see ABBA being printed which means it's been stored successfully here and printed out correctly here but this doesn't mean anything to the user, so maybe we should construct this sentence a lot better. So you could say, your name is, followed by a colon, and then we can end the speech marks. Now this is just a static string, and we're not incorporating our variable in, so what we can do at the end of the string is we can use string concatenation, which just means to add a string and append it to some variables. So you can use the plus notation, followed by the name of the variable. And now if you press F5 and type ABBA in, we can see it gets printed out, your name is ABBA. Awesome, so now that we have the user's name stored and read back to them to make sure it's correct, we can do the same thing for their age. So we could say, that's all right. Yes, your age. So we could use string age equals console.readline and we can pull that in and then we could use another output and say your age is and followed by age so now if we press f5 and run the program and type upper and type 23 we can see that all of the details has been processed so the only problem with this is as we covered in the last lesson it's always best to use data types correctly when determining what functions to use in this case we are pulling in strings from the read line as it says here this is the function call console.readline and the string is the return value which means we have to store this variable as a string but this is a problem because if we try to use our age variable later on and we think it's an integer because we've called it age and age our whole numbers when in fact it's a string then we need to add some extra lines of code to be able to turn this string variable into an integer so we could rename this variable or we could say it's now being called age input because this is the function that we're calling to store the age from the console and then in the next line we can make a new int variable called age and then we can use this function called convert to int 32 and then we can give the age input inside here so on one line we take what's been stored from the console and store it into age input and on the next line we use age input from the console to pass it into this function called convert.2 int 32 which will let us take a string variable and store it into an integer variable and if we run this code we should see no differences in the output but secretly what's happened is now this 23 is being stored as an integer rather than the string 
And that's really good in case we need to make something like an if statement and we can use age equals equals 23 and we can use the number 23 because that's an integer. If we use age input and we try to do this, we'll get an error because there's no comparison between a string and a direct integer. So we will be covering if statements more in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if I've missed anything and we can cover it further in depth. Please subscribe and like. See you in the next one.